Hey Vipers, we are on the brink of spring break and on the verge of having students return to campus. And so we'll take a few minutes right now to walk everybody through what the fourth quarter will look like for both in-person students and at-home students. A commitment form was sent out from our district office yesterday, March 4th. I am resending that form again in this current message because all families will need to go through and complete the form to indicate which learning option is going to be selected for your student. This form needs to be completed by Monday, March 8th, and it does lock your student's learning model in for the remainder of the school year. And unfortunately, changes will not be able to be made to the selection after March 8th. So we're gonna take some time to talk through what does in-person learning look like during quarter four and what at-home learning will look like for quarter four. But remember, this commitment form needs to be completed by March 8th. So let's talk about teaching and learning. Let's talk about what in-person learning looks like. In-person learning will look like this starting on March 15th. In-person students will be able to keep their current teachers and their current schedule. They will attend classes in person and they will receive live instruction from their teachers on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. In-person students will work independently and at home on Wednesdays and they are not required to log into class on Wednesdays as well. In-person learning is recommended for students who are ready to return to campus for a sense of normalcy in their instruction and in their social emotional needs. They are students who believe our procedures and mitigation efforts are sufficient to provide a safe learning environment. They're students who are str maybe struggling academically during remote learning and in need of additional support from teachers. They're students who maybe are struggling with social and emotional well-being during remote learning. And these students, maybe they're not self-starters and they do need a sense of daily structure and routine. At the end of the day, we foresee the majority of our students coming back on campus for in-person learning, as we know that students in the building being able to connect with their fellow students and their teachers in person is the best place to learn. However, we are going to provide an at-home learning option for students. Whereas maybe other districts have thrown all their students in in-person learning, we are going to provide an option for our, our students because we do know that there are extenuating circumstances in, in some events that will keep students home. So our, our mission during quarter four is that how do we provide a, a safe and uh, impactful learning environment for both sets of our students. So let's talk about what at-home learning will look like. At-home learners will keep their current teachers and keep their current schedule. They will attend classes virtually at home on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So at-home learners have a virtual schedule five days a week or virtual responsibility of five days a week. They will log in during the first 10 minutes of every class period for attendance and they will receive a quick overview of the lesson. And then primarily students will, after the attendance and after the check-in, they will sign off and they will work independently on assignments posted in the Google Classroom. Some teachers may keep their, student, their virtual students on for demonstrations or direct instruction and then send them off camera. But at a minimum, every at-home learner is required to be on camera the first 10 minutes of every class. This includes Viper success as well and advisory. Wednesdays, at-home students log in and attend all six classes, including advisory with their teachers, and this schedule runs from 8 to 1215. So again, the at-home students, they're working primarily independent, but there will be check-ins of a minimum of 10 minutes with every single class so that teachers can give instruction and let students know what to do. Teachers may also, so at-home learners be prepared for this, Teachers may also pull those at-home learners to watch or view a demonstration or lecture from time to time as well. And this will be communicated from the teacher to the students. That's why we're having that, that first part of the class check-in at the beginning. 
at home learners have to check in for every Viper success. They do not need to check in on Monday's advisory, but they will have their own advisory with their advisory teacher on Wednesdays. And then that Wednesday schedule is primarily set up so that our at home learners have a captive audience with their instructors on, on at least one day for an extended period of time. At home learning is, is recommended for students who are not healthy enough to attend in person and or those who maintain significant COVID related safety concerns. There are students who are self starters and they'll be motivated to learn without live instruction or school based structure and routine. There are students who have demonstrated academic success in the remote learning environment. And there are students who are maintaining social and emotional well being in the remote learning environment. And again, at the end of the day, we know some students are, are, are rocking it right now at home in the remote environment. So if they're having success, this could be a, definitely an option to consider. If they're not having success, we do highly recommend if it's a, a, an option for them due to the, the home life and, and um, health constraints, we, we would recommend they do come into the building. But we do know that the at-home model has been working for students and it's a, a needed option for students and that is why we're providing two options for all of our students district-wide so this is what the schedule will look like for all of our learners and essentially our schedule looks very similar to what it is right now in quarter three we are still utilizing the blocks so we'll have on mondays and thursdays students will attend classes one two and three and we're still having multiple opportunities for advisory and Viper success. And again, those dedicated Viper success periods fall during the same time in quarter four as they do in quarter three. So we have a Viper success option at the end of the day on Monday. We have it um, block two and three on Tuesday, block four and five on Thursday. We will continue to do Viper Connect on Fridays and then Viper success will take place on uh, for six block at the end of the day. And again, if you're a remote learning student, you're learning at home, you will log into every one of your class periods as well as your Viper success options. On Wednesday, at home learners are running this schedule where it's one, two, three, a short advisory, and then four, five, and six. The after the Wednesday schedule is set up as an early release schedule where the learnings in the morning and our teachers will will meet and do planning and preparation in the afternoon. For students that have an early release. They do not have to attend these end of the day Viper success sessions. So, for example, if I had a six period release, I don't have to come back for Viper success for third period. Logistically speaking, how this will work, it looks a little bit like this, where if you're an in-person student, you're going to your, your class periods. Advisory is where for Monday and Friday, that's how lunch is, is going to be um, scheduled. So if you have, uh, if your advisor has lunch, has a lunch, that means you will have a lunch. On Tuesdays, when it's five per success for second period, your lunch is tied to what lunch your second block teacher has. And the same for your fourth block Viper success on Thursday. So students may have three different lunches, but this also gives you the opportunity to have lunch with uh, different friends and uh, give yourself a different um, environment for, for lunch. So to conclude, in-person learners, they attend classes in person on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. On Wednesdays, in-person students work independently at home. They are not on campus on Wednesdays. At-home learners attend classes virtually every day of the week, Monday through Friday. They're going to check in at the beginning of each block, get the instruction, and then uh, either the teacher will dismiss them to work independently or they'll stay on for uh, a demonstration or, or a lecture. On Wednesdays, at home students are required to attend classes one through six and advisory in order to have a direct check in with all of their teachers. OK, moving on to safety procedures. So we sent these out earlier in the week, but I'll go through and kind of talk on some of the Verado specifics. So again, first, the best mitigation strategy in keeping our campus safe is that if your students not feeling well, go ahead and keep them at home. 
If an in-person student is not feeling well, you will call the parents will call the front office, let them know that their parent will their student will not be attending. And then we're going to ask that that student just doesn't even log on camera. Let them if they're sick enough that they have to stay at home, let them stay at home and rest and recover. Our teachers will work with students in order to keep them caught up when they return. Make sure and again, make sure you call in your students absence. Students do not need to log in. We want them to rest up and, and get better so that they can return. If it's a virtual student, same thing. St if you're even if you're at home, rest up and recover, have the absence called in, and then we'll work on getting you caught up when, when you are able to get back online. All of our students will again have to complete a daily health screener. This needs to be complete, uh, completed prior to loading on the, the bus or arriving on campus. Students will have the link to this screener on their Chromebook and QR codes will also be posted and available throughout the building. This will be checked to make sure that it is completed and students that do not complete this will be reminded so that it gets completed. Because again, we wanna make sure that we know that students on campus are healthy enough to be on campus. Transportation. Bus, bus transportation, it is required that students register for transportation. We'll talk about the specifics on that in just a moment. We'll have you, all of the students riding the bus will complete a health screener prior to loading the bus. Students will load the bus from back to front. As best we can, social distancing will be enforced based on student numbers and six feet apart might not always be feasible on the bus. Once students are seated, they must remain in their seat. Students will unload from front to back. Masks will be worn the entirety of the bus ride. Students who refuse to wear a mask will not be able to load the bus. And the buses will be disinfected in between runs. This is the reason why our start time will now be pushed back 20 minutes and school will begin on March 15th at 8.30. And it will end at 3.25. So a later start for Verado High School due to sanitizing the bus. In order to receive bus transportation, all students would need to register for bus transportation. Information is found, it can be found through um, the Edgelog Parent Portal, and it's, it's an app that is downloadable in the Google Play Store or Android or the Apple Store for iPhones. This app allows parents to track their students' bus in real time, as well as allows transportation to send out push notifications for anything that happens with the bus, such as the bus running late, mechanical issues, traffic, etc. All you need to do to register for the app is to have a valid email address and your student's five-digit student ID number. Transportation is requiring that all students be registered on the Parent Portal app this year in order to receive transportation. Please feel free to contact the district's route coordinator, Amy Sponsler, if you have any questions. Please register, and this is a, a quick turnaround, but please register um, preferably by Monday if, if possible, but definitely during spring break if, if you um, have not yet done so already. All right, arriving at school. Each school provides several entrances to access the campus. When our students arrive on campus, we will utilize three main entrances for them to enter the building. The bus loop entrance, the west cafeteria entrance, and the east cafeteria entrance. Our doors will open at 810. What this does is this provides our building and staff the opportunity to be ready for everybody to enter the building because we'll have students go directly to their classes upon entering the building. Students who want breakfast will be able to pick up a grab and go breakfast. And if they, um, if they get breakfast, they will be able to, to sit and eat in the cafeteria. If students are not eating breakfast, we're gonna have them report directly to their classrooms. Students, just as a reminder, as you enter the building, Please make sure that you have done your health screener and that you are also wearing a mask. All right, what does it look like inside the classroom? We'll continue to have desks face the same direction. When feasible, 
We'll try to keep our desks as close as we can to six feet apart, knowing that with more kids coming back into the building, we might not be able to reach that six feet marker. Masks will be worn at all times by both staff and students, and we will incorporate mask breaks during the 95 minute academic periods. Cleaning supplies are provided for each room, and at the end of each class period before students change classes, we will have uh, students sanitize both their desks and chairs. And hand sanitizer is readily available throughout all of our classes and in our hallway areas. Passing periods. We are asking that students keep their masks on during passing periods. We're gonna try to keep our students working in a, a nice easy flow, um, one direction to, to each side of the hallway and we will have students report directly to the next class. This was a, a thing that I thought our students did an ex outstanding job during quarter two, is that ability to go from one place to the other. We are trying to limit congregating. We know that everyone's gonna be excited to see each other. So walk and talk with somebody on, on your way to class, and that'll, that's how we'll, we'll access and utilize our passing periods. Lunches, we will have two lunches. So we'll have an A and a B lunch. Uh, we'll have several stations for students to pick up grab and go lunch because both remember both lunch and breakfast is free still. We'll have four inside stations for students to get a lunch and two outdoor stations. We'll ask our students to social distance as best as possible and we will have a maximum of six students per table. Our, we recommend that students sanitize their hands prior to entering the eating spaces as best they can utilizing some of the walk up hand sanitizer stations. And when they're not eating, that we are asking that they keep their masks on. If, if they are eating, obviously they will be able to take their, their masks down. Releasing students. As we release our uh, students, all areas of the building will be open to send students out. Uh, the academic courtyard, the east and west cafeteria, the bus loop, and the E-wing doors are all available to students for exiting the building. It's again, we're just asking that students go directly to where they need to be, whether it's to practice or to an event or to their vehicle or to the bus loop. We will try to limit congregating as, as best we can. Restrooms. Only four students will be allowed in at a time uh, in, in the bathroom in order to um, limit the number of students in an area. Students will use an electronic hall pass in order to access the bathroom or if visiting a counselor or going to the library. Our restrooms will be cleaned by our outstanding cleaning staff uh, every hour on the hour and restrooms will be monitored to ensure that minimal students are occupying the space. Um, reminders, make sure that students bring their own water or water bottle each day. Uh, we also ask um, that they are bringing their own classroom supplies as we are trying to uh, minimize shared items as best as we can. And we do recommend that multiple times through the day access hand sanitizer or, or washing their hands as best they can. What happens if there's an exposure or someone isn't feeling well? Individuals will be removed from the classroom and into an ice and placed in an isolation area immediately. Our health staff will um, examine the student and determine the next steps. Classrooms will be sanitized and notification letters will be sent to the families of impacted students. So if your student was either in close contact or if there was a potential exposure, you would be notified. There are examples of, of flow charts in terms of what happens for a student who isn't feeling well on campus and an employee who is not feeling well on campus. They're, they will be accessible through accessing this slide and clicking on those links. Reporting requirements. As a reminder, please report if your student tests positive for COVID-19 or if anyone in your home has tested positive for COVID-19. This piece is crucial for contract, contact tracing and potential quarantine procedures. Schools are required to report all confirmed positive COVID-19 tests uh, to Maricopa County Health Department. Schools are to provide close contact exposure names to the Maricopa County Health Department. An updated CDC guideline, guidance states close contact exposure should be tested regardless if you are asymptomatic. All right, final school procedures. 
questions about parking. Parking is free. Nobody has to pay for a parking pass and parking passes are not required. Students were asking uh, in return for this, please utilize the West parking lot when parking on campus. Activities and athletics are open to all students, regardless if they're in person or an at-home learner. So if you are a, uh, involved in a club, if you're involved in a sport, regardless of where you are learning, you're still able to participate. Clubs are meeting virtually still during Viper Connect and also in person in after, after school meetings. So talk to your club sponsor to identify when your group is meeting. And again, what, if the question is, what lunch do I have? Your lunch will be based on who your teacher is during that lunch block. So for example, whoever, wherever your teacher is for advisory, that's gonna determine if they're an A lunch or a B lunch. All right, final question. Can I see the campus before May 15th? Yes, we are utilize, or we're opening up the building from nine to noon on Friday, March 12th for a, uh, a, an in-person campus visit. There is a sign up genius link in this message that you are able to, to access and you can pick your uh, time. But we will open the building up for anyone who wants to be on campus, get a building tour and see the, the sites of Verado High School prior to students returning to the building on March 15th. All right, and so that's it. I know that's a, that's a ton of info to, to throw at everybody. If people, if you have questions, please uh, do not hesitate. You can reach out, you can email uh, myself or any of the administrators or school counselors on our team. Uh, we know that this is a, uh, it's, it's kind of been a crazy year, but we're almost to the end of it. And everybody's been working very hard and, and has been very supportive. And so we absolutely appreciate that. We're excited to get your students back on campus if that's going to be the case. And we're excited to continue working with your students as, as best we can to support them when they're at home to keep them connected to this building in these final weeks. So again, make sure that if you have not done so yet, please fill out the commitment form, which will lock in the, the learning model for your student for the remainder of the school year. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. We're almost there, everybody. Everybody's been doing a great job and, and it's time for the stretch run. So I hope everybody has a fantastic spring break. We'll look forward to seeing your student either in person or virtually on March 15th. Have a fantastic break, everybody. Take care, stay safe, stay healthy and stay connected. And please let us know if you need anything or if you have any questions. One Barato.